Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Michael Wynn with Akai Professional and today I'm going to be showing you the Akai Fire Controller, which is a compact USB controller specifically designed for use with FL Studio 20, which is one of the most popular softwares for creating electronic music. In this video I'm going to be going over some of the key features and functions to show you how it might help your music production. But just as a quick overview, it's a USB MIDI controller that features a grid of 4x16 soft touch RGB pads and these map to different features of the program such as the channel rack and step sequencer in step mode, a MIDI keyboard in note mode, a drum mode and also a performance mode to launch your clips in real time. Fire also has a bank of rotary encoders which map to key channel, mixer and user parameters such as volume, pan and pitch. There's also a dedicated transport control on the device so that you can record, stop, start and play your track and there's also a browser mode so that you can audition and load your samples, loops, plugins and VST instruments straight from the device. The song being used in this video is called Still In Love, which is a fresh release on Spinning from Music by Lucas of Team MBL. So thank you Lucas for letting me use the track and that's enough talking so let's get right into the demonstrations now. So I'm inside the project inside FL Studio 20 and let's take a listen. What I'm going to do is add some drums into the drop here. Using Fire to create drum patterns is really straightforward. So I'm in step mode and I'm going to be controlling the channel rack inside FL Studio. So whatever I do on Fire will be recreated inside the channel rack. So it's a really hands-on way to do your drum programming. And you're not limited to the four channels. So you can use the selection encoder to scroll up and down and access all your channels. Let's just start with a simple four on the floor drum beat. From here we can select one of our channels and start adjusting its properties. So I have selected the kick and I can adjust the volume of all the steps or just an individual step. And you can also change the pan, pitch and filter of a specific step. But let's add some claps because that beat's a little bit boring. And this is where changing the velocity comes in handy because you can just hold down steps and just adjust the velocity on the fly. Let's add some extra percussion. You're obviously not limited to one-shot samples, so I can launch loops. I've set this loop to cut itself, and I've just added it to the start of the pattern. It's quite loud, so I'm going to use the rotary encoder to adjust the volume of that channel. Now I'm going to change into song mode right here, and I'm going to hear this in the context of the song. While creating these loops, you can also really focus in on channels by muting and soloing specific channels using the dedicated mute and solo buttons, just here. And as well as being able to adjust channel properties, we can also select a different bank and start adjusting the mixer. So I'm just going to select the loop here and I'm going to start adjusting its mixer parameters, such as the volume, the pan. And as well as the channel and mixer bank, there's also user banks, which we can use to map these four rotary encoders to any parameters in the software. To link these controllers is simple. You just select the parameter that you want to adjust inside FL Studio. Now this could be a third party plugin or FL Studio stock. You right click and you select link to controller. Then you adjust the dial which you'd like to link and it will be automatically connected. Just like this. Let's use this to filter our song in real time. The next mode that I want to look at is note mode. So we can select note mode here and it gives us access to three octaves of a MIDI keyboard that we can play along with either our song or our pattern and we can record in whatever we're playing.
you can also access other keyboard modes to link to the same key and scale as your song. The next mode is drum mode, which is accessed just here, and it links fire to the FPC. And this is great for finger drumming. It's a really great way to sort of add a lot of humanization and sort of real feeling and groove into your drum beats. I've prepared a performance project here because I want to show you performance mode. So I've arranged the wave file loops from the song, but you can use MIDI loops and you can still use your VSTs, instruments and plugins just like you can with any other project. Fire's grid has updated to show these clips and you can scroll to access all the clips in your project and arrange it however you like. So performance mode works by launching clips. So we can select clips that we want to launch and this will cue them getting them ready to be launched. And then whilst they're being performed, we can either select other clips that we'd like to jump to next, or we can select empty patterns or the mute button to mute the clips. So let's just start with these first three clips and get performing. So I'm just gonna add the shakers in and out. So I'm gonna cue these three clips so that they'll launch on the next rotation. And then let's pull in this lead. So we're building up some energy. Let's add some claps. And performance mode is keeping everything in time for me, which is really handy. One of the great features about performance mode is that you still have access to your mixer. So I've linked these two filters or EQs to my four rotary encoders here, and I can manipulate them in real time. And as well as just filters, we can also map any parameter. So I've actually mapped the tempo to one of these dials, and I'm gonna change the tempo and filter the track in real time. And you can hear that the real-time pitch shifting really maintains the integrity of the audio. One of the great things about performance mode is that you can really mix and match your project up and try different clips from different parts of the project and just manipulate the song. A really handy feature is to use the record button on fire to record all of these ideas or the live set that you're performing. So you just launch your clips as you were, but with record enabled, it will remember the order and start building up a project of your live set. Thank you very much for watching. If you want any more information about the device, please check out the website, which will be linked in the description or the information of this video uh, for more information about the device and uh, its features, functions, and also where you can buy it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.